again. I just don't give him my camera. I'm picking it up. Sorry about that. Hi, my lovelies. So I was trying to think of an introduction for this video, and then I remembered that a little over a year ago, everyone was collectively making fun of Riley from Girl Meets World. Maya, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in. And I don't want to fit in. Weirdly her I don't know, just how weirdly written she was. Down to like the speaking patterns of this character. And that goes for like a lot of the acting on the show. It was just weird acting. Not to be a hater, but like Girl Meets World has always been one of those shows where I look back on it and I thought it was weird. Like I don't, I kept watching um, actively I think until like maybe a little into season two. I, whenever that love triangle happened with like Lucas, Maya and Riley, that point was where I stopped watching. I would tune in, you know, I wasn't a full on hater, but I was like, something is weird about this. I don't know. And I wasn't too like far off for thinking that because looking back, there's literally a communist episode. There's an episode where somehow we're supposed to think this college guy is like the bad guy for not wanting to date Maya, who's like three years younger than him. I like you. Dude, what is wrong with you? <laughs> She's three years younger than me. Sit, Sit down. down. But I feel like the lessons in this show were just kind of weird. Like they were obviously trying to get something across, but like a lot of the time I feel like, or some of the time it just wasn't landing. But hey, I guess they were doing something right because they didn't get canceled for quite a while. But the best way I can explain what we're gonna talk about today is like, you know, when you look back at a kid's show and there's like an adult joke or like just a joke or something in general that you didn't understand or like you found confusing and then you watch it back and you're like, oh, I was so innocent and oblivious. Um. This is that, except for... What the fuck? This is like when I remembered um, the episode of the Powerpuff Girls that introduced us to Bunny. That is like incomparable, but like I couldn't think of another example. What I'm getting at here is basically during amidst the whole um, Bully Riley Matthews challenge. <laughs> Bully Riley Matthews trend. I cannot word. I It just kind of dawned on me that this episode existed. It's basically um, where we find out Farkle is autistic and he tells his friends about how he got tested for autism and it is just so ableist and it's written so badly. The fact that looking back it was probably a lot of kids in my specific generation's first time knowing of autism and that was what they were exposed to. Awful, awful writing. And the fact me as an autistic child watched this episode like not even fully i guess grasping what it truly meant to me at the time but i watched that and i'm in his shoes and they treated him like that and it's just what were they thinking of the other you know thousands millions of autistic children that watch this show um what were they thinking and if they had more of a grasp on what that meant to them like how did that affect them i've seen a tweet where someone said it just felt like an autism speaks like a campaign or like commercial and i just feel like that's the best way to describe it i wasn't even planning on filming a video this week but this video has actually been in my notes app since this trend of bullying Riley Matthews in 2021. But I saw this tweet on my timeline this morning. It read, I blame Girl Meets World for making people think that being diagnosed as autistic is like the worst thing in the world. I will never forgive them for treating it like a disease. And I just think that describes it just so well. Like that's what it is. So in preparation for this video, I obviously had to rewatch the episode and it was, Saying this was a hard watch is it, it understatement. I cannot fathom the words to describe to you my where my emotions were. This it was like a roller coaster, and it doesn't help that like I'm the type of person where like I'm watching a show and something embarrassing is happening, I skip it. I, it's not happening to me, so like I can avoid it. I just I can't deal with the second embarrassment. So we start off in Corey's class and he's, you know, teaching as he does. He starts off this conversation about geniuses and has some like stuff written on the board, like names. I think Einstein's on there. But Farkle immediately says like, he doesn't know about Belgium. But like once he knows about Belgium, he's gonna know everything and his name will be up on the board. Hey everybody, it's happening right now. On your desk, Farkle's gonna blow. I know everything except Belgium 1831. And once I know that, I'll know everything. And then my name goes on the board with those three idiots. <laughs> It's made very clear, 
I mean, just knowing his character in general up until this point, but like it's made especially clear in this episode that he has a very high IQ and he's significantly like smarter than all his peers by miles. Not even a minute in and we're hardcore on the autism stereotypes. Soon after this occurrence, uh, Maya and Riley just make some comments saying, well, you know, with anybody else that would have been straight. I mean, with Farkle, we don't even lift him off the floor anymore. Then the guidance counselor actually comes in and asks to speak to Farkle. And of course his friends, specifically Riley, have to be a ball in his business before he can even answer the guidance counselor. Are you finally taking him away? He goes, we all go. I'm here so it's not just the girls. This is the exact scenes I'm talking about in Girl Meets World. Like, always have scenes like this and I'm like, why are they acting like this? Before anything else happens, they just all kind of leave because the bell rings and like... I guess they didn't actually care that much. So the counselor basically says she's got the results, which Farkle knows is like his IQ test score, which will prove he's a genius. She reveals that he's actually tested in the superior range and like how other schools might try to persuade him to go there since he has like a higher IQ than all his peers. But she brings up um, further testing for Farkle because the experts want to know maybe why he has such an IQ compared to his like fellow classmates. And with the schools, Mr. Matthews also brings this up, but before he, like Farkle can really even get an answer about like if he would be interested in going to a different school or like if he wanted to stay at his school, Riley has to show up out of nowhere. I'd never leave my friends behind. Who's a good genius? <laughs> I am. Anyway, we cut to the gang at Topanga's. They are throwing like a Farkle genius party, which his parents actually threw for him. Farkle's mom says in her hand, she has the answer to if he's a genius or if he's a real boy, you know, making a joke on he's a robot because he's so smart. I don't know why, but I expected her to fully like read out his like diagnosis. Like they'd even jump into it that quickly. This episode just started and they're like 25 minutes long. Soon after this, they're talking about their joke they have where like Farkle is married to both Riley and Maya. Hey, I want some of that. Yeah, Farkle, you love them equally. Marry them both. Wouldn't that be the genius thing to do? See why I keep you around. And like, I wasn't following. I don't really care. That's not what we're here for. As Maya's asking for any objections when she's like fake marrying um, Riley to Farkle, Schmackle walks in and Riley proceeds to immediately go up to her and hug her. Even though she's like visibly uncomfortable with it, all Riley does after noticing this is she says, Still having trouble with the hugging thing? Still having trouble with the hugging thing, aren't you? And Schmackle is actually another autistic character in this show. And the whole time in this episode, they play her like not getting social cues or her awkwardness out for laughs. And it specifically annoyed me significantly about the same as the Farkle thing, but if not, maybe more because they probably do this a lot in the show. Like there's so many scenes with her where like there's a laugh track played or it's like Maya specifically like, poking at her and it's like not even funny. I'm just like sitting there with a straight face. I'm like, where is the joke? I'll talk about it later, but I feel like Maya was like significantly the worst in this episode, like getting on my nerves so much, which is weird because she's actually my favorite character in this show. Like Riley's the main character, but like the real main character is Maya. We have to have that conversation. But I think it was also established in other another episode, like when they introduced her before that she didn't like hugs. Um, I think it's not a new occurrence. Riley seemed to already know she didn't like it, but she still does it. But she asked Farkle if he would be interested in transferring to Einstein Academy which is a um, like private school and they go to like a public school I think but this was also a school that Matthews brought up earlier when he was um, talking with the guidance counselor and Farkle. I also can't tell if I'm overthinking this one but like there's this ongoing joke with like she'll tell Lucas like stop hitting on me and it's like there's a laughing track and I'm like why are we laughing? I'm here to ask you to consider transferring to Einstein Academy. That's not happening. Stop hitting on me. Um I don't know if the joke is just I feel like, I kind of feel like the joke is like that he would never be interested in her and that's what it feels like, but like I genuinely can't tell if that's the joke or I'm just missing it. So if I'm like overthinking that, feel free to tell me. Anyways, the next day and we cut to Matthew's class yet again. He's talking about um, the geniuses and Farkle's name has now been added to the board of geniuses. He gets into the IQ test and basically goes on a tangent about labels. Basically how the IQ test is just giving you a label and how you really shouldn't feel the need to like live behind a label just because it'll get in the way of who you are. We can kind of see already the direction this is going with like, the out of context clips I've seen and just my memory of this episode even before like rewatching it. Lucas actually points out that if you get called something enough you'll start believing it in which Matthew says to believe in what you contribute to others. It matters not what you've done but what you do with what you've done. 
for others. Towards the end of this tangent, um, the guidance counselor comes in again wanting to speak to Farkle. The guidance counselor simply says that she just wants to talk to Farkle again and like doesn't even go into detail and he just leaves and he's like okay like doesn't even care. But everyone's face just gets really sad and then there's like sad like transition music and it just fades like I need a moment with Farkle. Okay. Farkle? What? He hasn't even said he's like autistic yet and you guys are already like trembling with fear. Like I cannot take this show seriously. Finally, we get to the infamous scene. We're back at Riley's house. So Farkle mentions that they did some more testing on him. His friends keep making these like tone deaf comments like they don't know this is a serious conversation even though there's like literally your parents or Farkle's parents and your parents are in the room. So like, I don't- What? They just noticed Farkle's a little farkly. I could have told him that. And Matthews further explains to his daughter that they noticed some behavioral traits in Farkle that warrants a more specific kind of testing. And it really only gets worse when Farkle finally like lets the cat out of the bag. I'll just let this scene, um, it's self-explanatory. They want to see if I have autism. You don't. Let's go tell them you don't. I might have a type of autism called Asperger's syndrome. You don't. Like, why are they acting like he just said he's terminally ill and has like five days to live? It's certainly not helping their case that like an outdated term is being used this whole episode. I'm just gonna say autistic because like that's correct. Farkle further explains what autism is and his friends just proceed to reassure him that he behaves like a perfectly normal person implying, you know, overall the stereotypes of like autistic people not being seen as like people. Farkle's dad even implies the results from today's interview will tell them the diagnosis, but Farkle just seems pretty sure that this is something that really resonates with him and makes sense. When I saw this scene for the first time in like years, it had my jaw on the floor. But just the fact that I watched this as a kid and so many other kids, like as I said before, this in like, I guess my age group, this could have been their introduction to autism. And this isn't even like, not even near correct. It's awful. Like it's so bad. It's like, bad is an understatement of how awful this is written and how badly they react to just how ableist it is. From their reactions to like the outdated term to like the stereotypes, it just like keeps getting worse. But I'm honestly not too surprised that again, this is a Disney show. Of course it would be Disney to normalize like an ableist reaction like this. And the fact as the show progresses, they just kind of mask a lot of um, Farkle's um, traits of autism as it like goes on, which don't quote me on, cause again, I haven't actually watched any episodes outside of this, but I did see a lot of people online saying it. And just from my vague memories of this show, I do rem I do recall. Oh my gosh, no shitty quality photo booth. I haven't updated my Mac since I got it like a little over a year ago. And I think that's why it's literally not letting me record. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of insert further um, that this also makes sense because it just reminds me of myself and how, you know, often people are forced into feeling like they have to mask literally every waking hour to like fit in with their peers seriously. So I feel like it, you know, it just kind of leans into that and it reminds me of myself, which is really sad because this is a show and they could have totally gone like a whole other direction. They had like the chance to, but they just did it poorly. And this episode is very telling. <laughs> What really got me is what Farkle's parents had to say. He said that he didn't want to go home because he didn't want to do anything but tell his friends this information first, which only makes their reaction to it like so much more hurtful. We know. We don't know. Guys, I've passed every single test I've ever taken. He made us come right over. He didn't want to go home. He didn't want to do anything except be with you. Like he trusted them with this and immediately wanted to tell them because like, they're his best friends and they just were so ableist to him. The next scene we cut to is the group in Riley's bedroom where Riley is like comparing Farkle's situation to Maya's immediately for some reason to make him feel better. And you got stuff, look at this. This is a bag of cats. Okay there, little helper. Lucas starts Googling like traits of autism and like reading them off and Farkle just like says he relates to literally everyone. With each trait he reads off, Riley and Maya are just trying to prove him wrong. For example, he does his infamous like, ha. All right, this website lists symptoms of Asperger's. Uh, the first one they mention is social awkwardness. Check. You don't do anything awkward. Ha! <laughs> well, that's just something you do and you're gonna stop doing that. And Maya immediately grabs him and is like, he's gonna stop doing that. This just continues on for the rest of the scene. Farkle just feeling 
Like he's having to prove to his friends that he truly feels like that this is his label. His friends, mostly Maya, having the same reaction of like, nope. After this, the gang goes back to Topanga's and Farkle asks if they'd be mad if he um, switched to Einstein Academy. And Schmackle comes in and Riley immediately hugs her again. Despite no damn well. Anyway, she brings up how she gave a tour of Einstein Academy to Farkle and her interest in Farkle clearly is like played for laughs, which his friends are also playing into in this scene. Actually, Farkle seems to be the only one not playing into this joke the whole time. Nor am I really interested in the consumption of a frozen treat. <laughs> what are you doing? What is she doing? Who do we call? I believe she's winking at me. But Schmackle and Farkle end up going outside and just like having their own table in which Farkle tells Schmackle the same news he told his friend. I may have a form of autism. Really? Asperger syndrome. This may be too much for you. I understand if you wish to leave. I would never leave. This doesn't scare you? Not at all. Only she has a completely normal reaction. Like drastically has almost no reaction. Is like, oh, okay. Later, Schmackle actually shows up at Farkle's school to kind of she said she wants to observe his environment since like he came and toured her school. We get the same stale old jokes with Farkle's friends. You have to stop. It's never gonna happen. Lucas, take a hint. <laughs> Shortly after this, the guidance counselor asks to speak to Farkle again. And when he comes back to class, he asks uh, Mr. Matthews if he could have Farkle time, which is like when he would take over the class. So Farkle talks a little bit about autism and then um, he goes on to say that he doesn't have it. People with ASD can fall anywhere on a spectrum of different behaviors. They talk to me for a long time. And you know what? I don't have Asperger's. Which I did not remember from this episode. Like I was, I had to pause. I was like, what? We went through all of this, all of this reassuring and Farkle having to prove himself to his friends and feeling certain that this was something that he connected to. And then he just doesn't have it. He exclaims that he's simply Farkle and we go into the same type of lecture we had earlier with Mr. Matthews about labels and how they shouldn't define us and how specifically the only label you should wear is your name. <laughs> Throughout this conversation, Smackle, who is there to see Farkle and what his school is like, um, finally just says that you know, he's at the place he belongs. These lessons are important, even if they're not in textbooks. Farkle, you are where you belong. I, on the other hand, should leave. But the scene after this is Riley and Maya and Schmackle in Riley's room. Schmackle basically kind of opens up about how she feels like, about how she feels Farkle doesn't want her anymore. Riley suggests immediately that this is because he's not actually autistic, which is exactly why. And with like what she said in the classroom, I could tell immediately that was why she left. Her whole demeanor, she seemed very like let down and hurt, I guess, in a way. She opens up about how she was diagnosed at five and how she struggles with it, but says she felt really comfortable with Farkle and feels now that she's kind of lost um, what they had in common. And then they go on some little tangent about how it's good to be different. I was diagnosed when I was five years old. I struggle with it. Isadora, I don't think there's anybody we respect more than you. I'm not like everybody else. But who wants that? And then Farkle comes in through the window. He says he wants to divorce his wives, referring to Riley and Maya. Please let me do the same. May I hug you? Yes. <laughs> I don't like this at all. I know. Don't stop. Okay. And then the final scene is Schmackle with the gang at Topanga's. They talk about her potentially transferring to their school and she asks what the benefits would be and mentions her struggle with making friends, basically saying it's easier, you know, when you have a good group of people implying them and they like welcome her in with open arms, which I really liked despite the fact that I feel like they weren't very nice to her this whole episode, except for maybe the last scene where like they were kind of reassuring her that like Farkle and her could still have a connection. And I feel like even then it wasn't really all that nice. 
But yeah, that's about the gist of the ableist Farkle episode um, from Girl Meets World. My final thoughts, I don't even feel like I have to say my final thoughts because I like, I was going off my notes, which I took while watching this and my thoughts are really already in those notes. But again, I just feel like this, I don't know why this has gone like, I guess unaddressed, not that Disney would ever take accountability for this in the first place. Like that there hasn't really been more of like an uproar about, whoa, what was this? I feel like up until recently, what I've seen on Twitter is the most I've ever seen about it. And there is a very good reason for why this show got canceled. And this is just one of those reasons. But yeah, I hope you guys um somehow enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you remember watching this episode and you know, what your thoughts are on this honestly or maybe not because I feel like people are the wrong people are gonna find this and tell me that I'm wrong when they're like literally neurotypical and I will see you guys in my very next video